I'm Steve Bogdanoff, and I vandalize my art. My canvas is made of plaster lime and gypsum, better known as sheetrock. Ah, look at all these breaks, see? Can you see those? Ah, those are great. And what I do is I peel off the paper on one side and then I power sand the paper till I get down to the plaster and change the grits until I get a nice smooth surface. See, the beauty of this is that it just has all these random cracks that I could play off of. After the breaking process, I am left with reassembling numerous pieces of my canvas, fitting them all back together, much like a jigsaw puzzle. Well, after I break this all up, I have to, before I reassemble it, I'm going to be breaking all the edges around to give it a, a real rough breaking effect, like it just came out of a wall. See, that's nice. That'll be nice. I also have to think about how it's going to cast shadows on the wall when it's hung up. And that would cast a nice shadow. This is blue monkey number 41, which means I've done 40 monkeys prior to this. And you can see here, you could get a nice effect by um, the spacers I put behind here. So the work starts out as painting, but after I'm done with it, it's also a sculpture. And it casts really nice shadows, depending on what kind of lighting you're doing. I do each piece as a template and number it. So, I, so when I do reassemble it, It'll be much quicker. Now what I'm doing here, I did the template, and I'm going to be sawing inside these black lines so when the piece, pieces are actually laying on top, it'll overlap. First of all, I'll let this set for 24 hours, and then I do the hardware on the back, which is like mirror hardware. And after that, I'll chisel out pieces and add some imperfections, more imperfections to the piece and sand areas, lightly sand areas. When everything is all sanded off and I think it's ready that it's done, as far as aging it, then I add all the um, staining and everything that I sanded away will have a nice effect of this dark aging effect. Now this is gonna dry and it's gonna get a little chalky again, but once I put the sealers on, it's as if it's wet all the time, it'll, it'll keep a nice rich color to it. 1990, I started studying archaeology on my own in the public library system. I was just fascinated with what I was finding in the archaeological sections, and I thought, well, you know, there must be a way that I could incorporate my art with the art of ancient history, you know, using acrylic washes and paintbrushes and, uh, and using a plaster surface, and I decided to try sheetrock. Just using very, see how thinned out that is? See, even that may be a little too thick. That's how this all starts. So it's, see, then I add water to it. And it goes right into the porousness of the, um, the plaster. You know, I just never know what the colors will bring. And I painted my first fresco in 1990. I broke it on my kitchen counter. And I think that's where I got the term vandalizing my work because that's what I was doing. I painted my piece and then I, I was destroying it basically. And, and, but then I took it one step further and I reassembled it. Thought, okay, now I have all these pieces together. How am I going to make it look really old without it just looking broken? And that's when I decided to try to recreate the, the dark cracks and the worn away parts of the fresco. I opened my gallery in the French Quarter in February of 2002 and all I had were frescoes, just all frescoes. And because of the nature of the work, it takes a lot of time to create a fresco. So my frescoes started getting sold and my walls became bare. I found it difficult to keep artwork on my walls. It was a nice problem to have, but yet at the same time I was very concerned that I would look like an empty gallery very soon. 
So an artist friend up the street from me said he did his own G clay prints to help fill the walls. So I taught myself to produce my own G clay prints. They became a huge success in the gallery. And also it was nice because I was able to preserve my artwork. And then through my publishing of some of my prints, I was in Art Business News with the Desire print. And an editor contacted me who is like the guru of Jaclay. And he publishes books on mastering digital printing and the Jaclay process. And he was very impressed with my work, so he featured me in his second edition of Mastering Digital Printing as the traditional artist that does his own Jaclays. So I introduced the Jaclays into my line, and people were really drawn to them. I added more and more Jaclays, and I have a collection of Jaclays that I continue to add. And one thing that I started to do about, I'd say about a year after I introduced my first few Jaclays, is add remarks at the bottom of the Jaclay. And a remark is just a drawing that the artist does of a portion of the, the actual piece, just to give it more authenticity, because it makes it more original and the print more valuable because the artist is actually taking pencil to paper and doing a sketch and I sign them as well and add in an embossed insignia. All of my prints are limited editions, there are no open editions of my prints. So how was that? You painted it again? I have a 200 pound printer. Wow. That's how we do it. I mean, the canvas is on a roller. I can't believe you paint eyeballs. It looks like something. Yeah. Well, you know what? The, those eyes are going to be looking back at me for a long time because it takes weeks to finish this. So I figured I'm going to have to have a connection yeah. here. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This piece is awesome. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I said it last